فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ونزلنا عليك الكتابة بيانا لكل شيء وهدى ورحمة وبشرى للمسلمين صدق الله العظيم سورة النحل في القرآن أن الله سبحانه وتعالى declares and we sent down the book يعني the Quran on the O Muhammad عليه السلام that this book might explain all things that this book might explain all things and therefore that this book might explain that strangest of all events to occur in the religious history of mankind and you cannot ignore it no not after tonight's lecture when Banu Israel who had been expelled from the Holy Land and dispersed in a strangely scattered diaspora after 2,000 years Banu Israel returned to the Holy Land to reclaim it as their own what is the explanation we have provided an explanation from the Quran. It is in this book. For those who differ with this explanation, we ask them tonight, give us your explanation from the Quran. When the state of Israel, which was destroyed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, more than 2,000 years ago, now strangely and mysteriously and mystifyingly, a state of Israel is restored in the Holy Land. What is the explanation we ask? We have explained it from the Quran in this book, Jerusalem in the Quran. If you differ with us, we say, Give us your explanation from the Book of Allah. This Quran not only provides an explanation of all things, but also provides guidance. How should we respond to this mystifying event of the return of the Jews to the Holy Land and the restoration of the state of Israel in the Holy Land? What is the guidance specific to this in the Quran? That explanation and that guidance have come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as rahmah. Woe unto those who will not reach out and accept that rahmah and thank him for it. And for those who accept it and apply it in their lives, bushra lahum, good news and glad tidings for them. They will understand what others cannot, and they will succeed when others will not. Brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. We praise Allah and we glorify Him this night when we deliver our fourth, fourth lecture in Lakemba. It could be the last. Allah knows best because we live in a strange world in which the barriers are now being placed for those who teach the deen. We praise Allah and we glorify Him. And we beseech Him this night most humbly for His guidance and for His blessings and for His protection. And we pray for peace and for blessings on all His noble messengers and in particular on the last of them all, the blessed Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Someone should have warned me that when you travel by virgin air, you must take food with you. <laughs> so we went to Perth, it's four hours. And on our way back, we were hungry. 
So we had virgin air, food. <laughs> and so you're lucky you're not going to get two and a half hours tonight. I was preparing to give you two and a half hours tonight. So you might have to settle for an hour and a half. We also have some good news for you tonight, alhamdulillah, because most of you here in Lakemba are Arabs from Lebanon, you have from Egypt, you have the Arabic language. I just got the news from New York that this book is now almost halfway translated into Arabic. Only half remains and they have assured me the, this is a brother who is the head of the Arabic translation department at the United Nations in Manhattan. He was just retired. And he offered to translate this book into Arabic. He's finished half and he's assured me by the end of this year, inshallah, he'll finish the whole book. So this book can now reach the Arabic speaking world. But in the meantime, I would be very happy if you can send this book to those in the Arabic speaking world, in Palestine in particular, in Egypt, in Jordan, who understand English. So it may reach them without delay. Jerusalem in the Quran is a subject of profound importance one of the most important subjects of all for Muslims to seek to understand today. And yet, it was a subject which it was almost impossible to understand 50 years ago. Until events began to unfold, now it is easier to understand it. We hope that as a result of this lecture tonight and the lectures we've had before, at least one thing will emerge, and that is we'll all now return to the Book of Allah to study it seriously, to try to get from the Book of Allah that which explains the world today. The subject begins, of course, with Ibrahim alayhi salam, who was thrown into the fire. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved him from the fire and declares in Surah Al-Anbiya, وَنَجَّيْنَاهُ وَلُوطًا إِلَى الْأَرْضِ الَّتِي بَارَكْنَ فِيهَا لِلْعَالَمِينَ We saved him. And we delivered him and his nephew Lut alayhi salam, Hijra, to a land in which we had placed blessings for all of mankind. This is the holy land in which is located Jerusalem. Tonight we want to attempt something that we've not done before. Not anywhere else in the world and not in Australia. For the first time we attempt it tonight. We attempt to define the Holy Land. What is the geographical limit of the Holy Land as located in the Quran and the Sunnah? Because we want to understand why is it that Mr. Bush wants to attack Iraq? Hmm? Why? Why is it that the state of Israel is so hungry to expand territorially? Why? He has taken Ibrahim alayhi salam on a journey from Ur, you are, which is in Babylon, which is close to the mouth of the Euphrates River, where the Euphrates River reaches the sea. And he travels with his family to the Holy Land. But notice the journey. Between the beginning of the journey over here in what is today Iraq 
and the end.